All right, Alex, uh, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit to your fellow believers? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Njimana, and uh, I was born and raised in Rwanda. And uh, long story short, I got adopted into a family in the United States when I was about 15 and uh, moved to Boone, to the mountains in 2013. And I've been part of the heart since then. And I love, uh, love being part of this community. Alex, what drew you to Jesus? That is a, a powerful question that I love to talk about. What drew me to Jesus? You know, being born and raised in Rwanda, uh, one of the person in my life that was um, uh, kind of planting that seed in my life through about Jesus Christ was my grandmother. My grandmother really taught me a lot, but because of the place where I grew up and the hatred that had been created among the people uh, of, of the country I grew up in Rwanda, that uh, saw a lot of people being, uh, being killed because of hatred that was created between the people of the country. And so I find myself losing the person in my life who was the one really uh, taking care of me, who was the one loving on me and, and teaching me that, uh, that faith that had been planted in my life. And so all my faith literally shattered because of that when my grandmother was killed and my uncle. And so I'm in an orphanage and I'm starting to wrestle with these questions as a little boy. And I'm asking, does God love me? But, it, but I knew that that little seed of faith has been planted in my life. Uh, my grandmother was teaching me. I, it, st- it was still there. It was just being hidden it was kind of like, um, um, kind of like if you took a, a, an apple, or let's say you wanted to plant an apple tree and you go out in the woods and you plant, a, you plant it, but then you put a, a really heavy brick on top of it. Mm-hmm. That was what's hap- what was happening in my life because of the war that took place in Rwanda. And that's what the, the genocide that t- did in my life. Mm-hmm. It put this heavy brick on top of the seed that had been planted way long ago. As a, little, as a little kid. And so I'm, I, I got to go to Uganda. And while I was in Uganda, that's when I was being discipled. So God knew that I couldn't do it alone. I couldn't come to faith alone. So he sent me people who were walking in Christ already. And they started to love me, to counsel me. But when they, the more they did that, the more angry I got because I was asking, well, you are telling me that God loves me, that God cares. Yet God watched while his people are being killed, his, um, my grandmother being taken away from me. I said, how can that be? So what drew me to faith was me realizing that through all of the turmoil, through all of the things that happened in my life, the tragedies that I went through, that he was with me along the way, protecting me. A verse that actually helped me see that, I, uh, I will never forget reading Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 as a little kid seated at this training center. I, if I went today back to Uganda, I can go to that compound and I can go to that room and find and I can show you where exactly I was when I read that verse and where I actually accepted the Christ as my, life, my Lord and Savior. Because that was a powerful moment for me. It was like an aha moment when I realized the many miracles that he had done to protect me from the day I was born. But I wasn't seeing that because, um, because I was angry, I was bitter towards everything that happened in my life. But that's what drew me to Jesus because I realized that he loved me even though I didn't love anyone, I didn't love myself even uh, because of what I've, you know, what I've done. Um, and the other aspect of what drew me was me, it was me struggling with the prayer, asking God to forgive me yet I wasn't willing to forgive others because of that time. I had so much anger that even the little things, um, I, wanted, I wanted revenge all of my life. And so I was, that's what drew me to Jesus, rather than that he loved me before I even knew him, that his presence was with me from the day I was born and that he had a plan for my life. Honestly, that's like in Uganda specifically, that's where I gave my life to the Lord because that's when... Um, I started to be counseled to be, to be discipled. Mm. Um, just like, it, like we all have, have a discipleship in our lives, people who come in our lives and to challenge us. And uh, that's when I got challenged 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, it helped me open my eyes to the miracles that God had done to protect me. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Alex, what challenges your faith? I'll tell you the very first thing that challenges my faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, at a time when I was, you know, nine years old and uh and I was, I, you know, I was, I was so ready to, you know, be always on fire, and I'm still on fire for the Lord. And I was on fire, and I remember, so we're in Uganda, and I had just given my life to the Lord, and I knew that, you know, in my little faith at that time, I knew that if you pray to God, everything is like, boom, it's gonna happen, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. And so I get stuck in Uganda. All of the kids around me get their visas to come to the United States to travel with the choir, and I did not get the visa. Uh, Kenyan kids get their visas. Ru- uh, Rwandan kids get their visas. Ugandan kids who are who had, had been waiting, they get their visas, and I get stuck in Uganda for several several months to the point where I was the only kid at the training center, and they shipped me off to a boarding school. Oh my this God. whole time, I'm praying. So God, why don't you give me a visa? You know, I never, you know, I never join the rest of the choir. And I was so that challenged me in that moment mm-hmm. as a nine-year-old. But also, it built my faith so much because at that time I was in a foreign foreign land, mm-hmm. Uganda. I didn't speak the language really well, mm-hmm. and I was learning English at that time. I didn't know much English, so the only <laughs> there was no one to speak Kinyarwanda with me. Uh, my native language. So the only person I could really, really talk to was Jesus, was God. And, and I mean, I was praying so hard and the rest of the whole African trans choir was praying that I would get this visa. It didn't take, it took at least several months, like at least six, more than six months. And which is forever if you're nine years old. Yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's <laughs> forever when you're a teenager and an adult, yeah. but definitely when you're nine, that's an eternity. Yeah. My goodness. So I, yeah, I find myself in the middle of the night, literally in the middle of the night, crying my, mm-hmm. myself to sleep mm-hmm. uh, because I thought God had abandoned me. And, but eventually when I got the visa, I, I, I went, I came to the United States and it was uh, one of the first times that built my faith, that challenged my faith. And I realized that's when I learned that God's miracles, God answers our prayers, but the way the timing is better, it, his timing is better than ours. Mm-hmm. Because for us, we are humans. We want everything to be right there and then. And so that's what challenged my faith. Mm-hmm. But what, you know, what challenges my faith today, and I, we, many of us even uh, struggle with this, is also seeing the you know we see the atrocities that happen all over the world the things that happened long ago and still happening yeah. it's one of those like yes it, it challenges i know deep inside i have no doubt who god <laughs> where god is how god's sovereignty and god's faithfulness through it i think when when you still go through difficult times yeah but sometimes but also th- that, that, there's that moment when you can be, you can kind of challenge your faith when uh, you're asking God, where are you? But he's always there. He's always there. And I have no doubt, but you know, some of those uh, moments you like, you're thinking as a like, God, <laughs> do something. Again, it kind of, I, and then that's what I remember. I always go back to that moment as a nine-year-old. Sometimes we don't remember how God has answered our prayers or how he showed yes. up. And to like yeah. hold on to that and cherish it, you can, <laughs> you can hold on to those, those moments where God has showed up in amazing ways in the middle yeah. of deep challenge. Um, yeah, and our daily lives, I, uh, in, in our daily lives is a constant, um, constant challenge of faith. Yeah. And I think if our faith uh, in our daily lives, if, if our faith is not challenged, we're not growing. Yeah, yeah. And I and I feel like that, like whatever we go through, whatever comes our way in our in our journey, in our daily lives, um, the conversation, the tough conversations we have, um, the tough decisions we that come across us, you know, those are the cha- challenge of faith, our faith. Are we going to stick to that faith of who God is, who we believe uh, in deep inside of our hearts? And so if we're not being challenged, um, our faith is, I believe that our faith is not growing. And we want to be able to kind of build our foundation um, in Jesus. Our foundation in Him has to be so deep that when we face those challenges, our shaking up a little bit, that we don't fall apart.
because we know who our, where our faith lies. Right. Our roots are deep in Him. Yeah. Well, Alex, what keeps you holding on to your faith even today? What keeps uh, me holding on to my faith is I know deep inside that um, within my faith, within the lens of uh, biblical worldview, is where I find hope. Mm. And, and I cannot find that anywhere else in anything, in anyone other than my faith in Jesus Christ. He's still sovereign. I may not understand everything that takes place in this world, and I probably will never will, but I know who does, and that's Jesus Christ. And that's who I hold on to, and I pray that the Lord will continue to uh, build and uh, try to uh, continue to even build my faith even stronger with the things that are you know, that even we face day to day, the, uh, the mundane, the little things or the big things that happen in this world. Um, looking at that just continues to build my faith. And, and that's why I hold on to it because in him, I have all the hope. Um, and what keeps me faith is that I know that um, the troubles of this world, it seems cliche, but it's, I mean it with all my heart, it's true. But the troubles of this world will really be gone. And I know where... I will stay, I spend eternity. And I pray that, you know, my brothers and sisters know that faith. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. And, and the Lord appeared to, uh, to him from far away. Um, and he said, I, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness. Um, again, I will build you. And, I will, and, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. He's talking about the Israel, Israelites and, and he's talking about his children in general, but specifically he was talking about the Israelites. And so tell him how much he's, he loves his children yeah. with an everlasting love. Yeah. And I want to hold on to that love. And my challenge in why I continue to hold on to my faith is I want to be my prayer and my desires to to share and to talk about the great things that God has done yeah. and with that everlasting love that he has for me and he has for his children yeah. and for everyone not to know that. I may be misquoting. I think it's, a, I think it's attributed to C.S. Lewis, Christians that are most focused on the world to come do the most for the one here, you know, in the yeah. here and now. And yeah. uh, man, I mean, you're, you're all over the world uh, really spreading hope. <laughs> like that's... Uh, yeah. It's something you live out, man. So it's not like, I think some people get in their head that because we hope for the next, what God is going to do in the new heavens and new earth, that somehow we yeah. become disinterested in, in what's happening today. And it's actually the opposite, <laughs> you know, because yeah. of what God will do, it gives us a sense of urgency about yeah. uh, where to draw our hope for, for the world around us now. Alex, do you have any key advice for young believers? And maybe this is something that maybe you wish you could have encountered yourself and in, in your adolescence or your early early uh, years of, yeah. of, of faith and growing up, uh, what do you? What, what's a key piece of advice for young believers today? Trials are gonna happen. I used this example I, that when I came, became a Christian, I thought I was gonna sit back and sing kumbaya, <laughs> and everything was gonna be, you know, piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah. Now. We want everything to be perfect mm -hmm. and to, you know, and then we expect nothing's going to happen. And so when, for example, when a young believer loses, let's say, for example, loses a member of a family or mm -hmm. has a, a, a break, a break, a breakup of yeah. a boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. Those are rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those, then you think, then we blame God for those situations that happen instead of seeing how God may be protecting or being with us, yeah. even through the morning, through the grief, always look back mm -hmm. and see, why do I believe what I believe? Mm -hmm. uh, why do I, um, where, how deep is, are the roots of my faith? Yeah. Um, are they because I asked for, are they shallow because of uh, give and take? I asked God to give me this and he gives it to me. And then that's the kind of faith to keep the roots of their faith deeply yes. in yes. Jesus Christ. And how to do that, there are people in your life 
that can help you because you can't do it alone. Uh, there are people in your life who want to help you, you as a young believer uh, get deeper mm. in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with your faith. Uh, could be your parents who are rooted in their faith or your youth pastor or your best friend, mm -hmm. whoever, or your mentor, whoever that person is. But also, um, is if you don't have, as a young believer, if you don't have that person to really challenge you in your faith, to help you go deeper, it's a good idea to do that. Yes. I still talk to my mentor today, the people who challenged me in my faith. In Jeremiah, you've, 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 you've mentioned Jeremiah's uh, text several times, but uh, your, your advice about like being deeply rooted is reminding me of uh, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted yeah. by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought. It never fails to bear fruit. And we're going to have those times and periods of drought. We're going to have mm -hmm. those hardships and storms of life. But uh, you're, 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 you're reminding us so keenly that, that we really need to stay rooted. And in doing so, um, we'll see that God's really always there, even in, in the drought. Is there uh, anything that you, like key practices in your life, maybe uh, briefly list a couple of things that you, you, you that make yeah. that tangible for, for uh, young people, uh, for all of us? How, how do we, how do we stay rooted? Is there, is there things that you would recommend we, we do in our faith to, to stay rooted in, in Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, is prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one um, is uh, is one that I even myself want to get, continue to get even better at it, is reading his word. Yeah. yeah. Constantly. Consistency um, is a key to, honestly, to anything in life. Mm -hmm. And that goes to our faith as well. I love to run. I always use uh, running as an example. Yeah. Uh, if I want to run... You know, if I want to run a 5K or a marathon, I have to stay consistent in my training. If I don't, I'm going to suffer at the end. Yeah. I'm going to be in pain. It's so horrible. how do I avoid that pain? <laughs> the race, yeah. <laughs> it's, the it's train consistently. Yeah. So how do I avoid uh, falling uh, away from our faith? Yeah. Is consistently being in his word and prayer yeah. And, uh, and I share this with you, not to uh, say that, oh, my goodness, I'm perfect. And, you know, I got it all together. Yeah, no, um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be the first one to say that I'm not perfect at that. And that's something I strive to do. Yeah. And uh, that's the practice that I really love to, that I, I continue to do, but I try continue to do even when I know when I'm trying to fall back, I try, I'm, I'm reminded of that. So I'm, I'm sharing this with you also reminding myself that's right. to do that as well yeah that's right yeah this yeah. this whole faith thing is a it's a group project <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, yeah the journey uh, yeah we we need each other in that uh, yes well alex i'm so grateful for your time and for your faith and for sharing and uh yeah looking forward to having you in person over at youth group so thank uh, you thank yeah. you so much i'm looking forward to sharing with you to uh you know have any questions uh that we can fellowship together and share what God, uh, glorify the Lord, what he's done.